Good morning and welcome back to Move with Joe. Today is day three of our morning mindset and awareness series. And today we're gonna be focusing in on the neck and shoulder and the relationship of how they move in conjunction with each other. So if you're dealing with any type of neck discomfort, neck pain, or by the end of the day, like a work day, you start to get stiff in the neck, this will be a great lesson for you. Um, in the first image here, we have a picture of the back of the neck and the shoulders. So you can see the edge of the, the spine of the scapula and then the attachment on the left hand to the traps that attach up into the occipital ridge in the back of the skull. So there's, as you can see, a lot of different musculature on the right hand side, the trapezius is pulled away. So you see the underlying musculature and you can see the muscles of the neck attach right into the shoulder blade, which then attaches into the arm. So there's a great um, connection between the muscle groups of the neck and the shoulders. And I'll just show you a side image of the lateral neck here. And all these muscles, again, attach into the shoulder girdle, which the fascial connections continue on into the chest and back and on into the arms. So today's movement practice is we're gonna be starting out on our back. So if you need any type of mat underneath you, please go ahead and grab that. And we will begin on our back and begin to tune into how the ground comes up to support you. Notice as you inhale, what parts of your rib cage begin to press into the ground. And sense if there's a little difference between the right or the left side of your back of your rib cage. Does one side get a little more pressure into the ground than the other? And notice which shoulder is in more contact with the ground and the one that is maybe floating a little bit higher off the ground, or maybe it's not even touching the ground. Bring your attention into your spine. So if you, you start down at the sacrum, it's a triangular bony, uh, bony plate that is at the base of your pelvis. What part of the sacrum are you waiting? Do you notice more weight towards the tip on the coccyx, the, the tailbone, the very end of it? Or do you feel more weight coming towards your low back? And then sense up through the lumbar spine. The lumbar spine has five vertebra. And just sense which vertebra are in contact with the ground. And if there may be none in contact with the ground. So you can imagine what that arc of the lumbar spine looks like. If you were to draw that line, how big of an arc would you have? And then come up into the thoracic spine. And here you have 12 vertebra coming up through the thoracic spine where your ribs begin to attach into your spine. And then coming up into the top of the torso where the neck begins and tracing the line into your cervical spine. And again, here there's probably a certain number of the cervical spine vertebrae that are not touching the floor. So again, what does that arc look like? Now bring your attention into your arms. Sense the length from your right fingertips up through your wrist into your elbow and then up into your shoulder. And compare that to the left side, from the fingertips on the left side to the wrist, up into the elbow, and up into the shoulder. Which arm's longer? Which fingertips are farther from your head? And notice are your hands turned up or are they turned down? And which elbow supports you more? If you were to begin to roll onto one side, which side would you roll onto? So begin to turn your head a little to the right and a little to the left. 
what's the initial force or effort that's involved to initiate the movement? So pause it back in your starting point. And you need to move really slowly for this. But just begin to notice how much effort is involved in overcoming the weight of the head against the floor. Just get a sense that it would be easier to turn your head to the right or to the left. And so we begin to explore our preferences or the way our body is organized and how we have these preferences that in a lot of cases have been here for a really long time. Like for example, for me, it's much easier to initiate rolling the head to the right a little bit. And slowly roll your head a, a little farther until you get to the next spot where you feel a sense of resistance. And then just come back and try to the other side. Just the first spot that you feel like you'd have to effort a little bit more to go any farther. Great. So now take your right hand and place it on top of your forehead and slowly begin to roll your head back and forth. So you can imagine your head is a rolling pin. And so your right hand is rolling between your fingertips in one direction and then rolling back to the palm. So you notice the quality of your movement. So you're not forcing the movement. You're just taking it to wherever is easy, wherever is comfortable. Good. Go ahead and relax that arm. And take your left arm and place it behind your head. And now begin to rotate your head back and forth with your left hand underneath your head. And just notice how this changes the movement. What's the sense of the weight of your head? You're trying to just let your head rest in your hand, using your left hand to begin to rotate the head to the left and to the right, back and forth. Great, let that rest. And bring your attention into your breath. Notice if there's any mental chatter going on, or if there's a slight quieting to the mind. And then again, slide the left hand behind the head so that your the back of your head is resting in your left palm. And then bring your right hand up to your forehead and begin to roll your head back and forth between both hands. So you're rocking your head back and forth and notice how your scapula begin to engage with the floor. The scapula, those bony plates on the back of the back of the shoulder, and you can probably feel them sliding back and forth. Which one moves easier? All right, good. Let that rest. Okay. Go ahead and bring your arms down by your side. And just notice, roll your head a little to the right and a little to the left now and see if there's a, 
an increased sense of ease or lightness in the quality of the movement. And then go ahead and take your left hand, place that on your forehead. Slowly begin to roll your head back and forth as if it were rolling pins. The fingertips come off as you go towards your palm. And as you go towards your fingertips, the palm comes off. And notice, do you find yourself moving your hand with your neck? Or are you able to maintain the neck just being fully relaxed? It's just there to go along for the ride. Great. Let that rest. Just notice if there's any difference in the relationship of the back of the head and the way it's resting on the floor. You can sense into the upper rib cage and just notice if there's any slight change in the contact of the upper ribs. And begin to take another inhale and just notice if there's anything that's changed with the quality of the breath or the amount of ribs that may be in contact with the floor. And then go ahead and slide the right hand behind your head. And then begin to roll your head a little to the right and a little to the left with the right hand underneath. So again, the hand is doing the work. The head is along for the ride. And you can sense what's the quality of the movement. How much of the neck do you feel rotating? And can you get a sense of the rotation going farther down into the torso? into the upper thoracic spine. Take your left hand to your forehead, right hand still behind, and begin to rotate the head back and forth with your left hand on top and your right behind. And again, you're only making the movement with your hands. Try to just let the neck and the head go along for the ride. And notice which hand is working harder? Which hand's leading the movement? And go ahead and switch the hand that's leading the movement. So if it was the hand on the bottom, now the hand on top begins to initiate the movement and the lower hand follows. and then reverse it. So in this case for me, the lower hand is now leading. And then let them both rest. Bring your hands down by your side. And just sense the ease and the availability of the neck to roll on the floor now. And for a lot of people, there'll be a significant change in the ease, the distance that you can roll, the ease of just even initiating the, the first movement. You might notice that side that felt a little harder is now a bit easier. It might be even easier than the uh, 
side that was initially easier to, to move to. Good. Take a deep breath and notice the quality of the rib cage. Notice where your breath goes into, if you feel more in the chest or in the back, into the abdomen or low back. And again, just trace that line, the arc of the lumbar spine from the sacrum, coming up through the thoracic spine, noticing each of the vertebrae that are in contact with the floor, and then bringing that up into the cervical spine and up into the base of the head. So notice if those arcs that you drew have changed anyway. Notice what, where the weight is in your sacrum. Maybe one hip has increased its weight or maybe it feels more distributed between each side of the hips. So go ahead and roll over onto your side. And then you can come up to sitting. And in sitting, go ahead and place your right hand on your forehead, left hand behind you. And again, you can begin to take your head to the left and to the right. Notice which arm is leading the movement this time. And go ahead and switch it. So if the front one was leading, have the back lead. All right, let that rest. And begin to rotate your head a little to the right and a little to the left. Notice the quality of ease with the movement. And you can start to turn to look over your shoulders. Sense maybe one is slightly freer than the other and you can sense now that you're beginning to look over your shoulders, how much farther down the spine can you feel the rotation? So now we're not limited to just the cervical spine. All right, so take one more moment to just get a sense of the ease of the neck, moving back and forth. Bring your attention back into your breath. Take a nice deep breath and just notice where your breath goes. Feel the expansion of your ribs, the breath going into your belly maybe into the lateral parts of the ribs, into your sides, into your armpit, into your back. And then just take a moment to set an intention for today. Maybe a goal or a way you wanna be throughout the day. And when you're ready, you can come on up and I hope you have a great day and I look forward to joining you tomorrow.